Your music exclusive. I, I, I grew up like a savage. So I drop a hoodie and it sell out like in like three minutes. That's ten racks. You know what I'm saying? So I was just clocking, clocking, clocking. And I'm not gonna lie, the first few times I dropped Cookies clothing, I lost out big time. I think the first one was at the Bill Graham at a show uh with Wiz Khalifa and a bunch of other people, Schoolboy Q. Mm, I forgot the other people on that show, but I printed up like a thousand and fifteen hundred t shirts. I thought I was gonna hit for sure. I only sold like four or five. Damn. And I was stuck on all those, and I kind of gave up. I'm like, fuck it. Shit ain't working. But I sat down with this guy from Silicon Valley. He's like, you know, what would make it his if you sold them things for 100 bucks. You should probably find like a logo T2. Like, I was putting hella graphics and shit, so mm-hmm. that's when I came up with this logo right here, the Cookies logo, and yeah. I put that bitch on the hoodie and put the strings on there, and first drop, done. Done. I'm talking about like went from selling four shirts to selling 100 at $100 in like three minutes. That's crazy. And who, who? Uh, so you just came up with that logo? Now my boy Photo Doctor did, Shemp. Okay. Legendary Shemp. The okay. One did all the covers out here in the Bay for all of us. Damn. And and because it looks, you know, like, I look, you know, when you think about branding and you think about logos and you think about what logos match for what and how it makes you feel, when you look at the Cookies logo, it, it feels, you know what I mean? It feels Welcome. good. Feels good. So I had, that was the first logo, and the second logo I did with my boy Al Fresco. Um, shout out to my boy Al Fresco. But we we did the Circle C by it. So I kind of drew mm-hmm. like a rough idea of what I wanted. It looked like a ghetto. I drew like a circle with like a little bite out of it, and I did like some little weird ass little C that I. Could, he brought it to life. Brought it to I life. I showed him how I wanted, it, just like that. I was like, like I want to kind of be like. Shh. Yeah. I drew a hella shady. He did that for real, for real. So yeah, that's dope. You know, that's our identity right there. That's mm-hmm. your identity. You can stamp it on anything, bro. Mm-hmm. You can stamp that bitch on everything. This is your logo. Right. Then I picked a colorway. Yeah. So I have all three, and that's what a brand is, in my opinion. That's dope. That's dope. Was um, so eventually after after uh, you know you dealing with Wiz and all those guys. How long in between was that timeline where you actually signed the Taylor game? I think like probably like about a year of fucking with them. Mm-hmm. I was at South by Southwest with them. We had the Young California House. That shit was crazy. It was grimy as shit. We put up in the hood over there. I didn't even know Austin, Texas had the hood. We were in the hood. <laughs> and I sent the pack out there before we got there. I'm like, oh, man, the pack ain't going to be here. Yeah. We're fucked. Right. There's no, we're in the fucking hood. We're fucked. Yeah. But sure enough, the pack was there. So I got my little half pee of weed out there in Austin. Maybe it was a pee. And I was sleeping on the floor. And we, we got to the door. And I think, I, was I with Will or Stretch? I was, I was with one of those guys. And you could tell that someone just punched out the door, the lock, and, and just fixed I'm like, your brother's house just got broken into recently. So I called Wiz. I'm like, bruh, I want a burnout mission right now, dude. Where y'all at? Let me come crash with y'all. And that's the first time I ever really asked him for something like that. Okay. He said, come through. They had the mansion. We got drunk. We partied. And then uh, I was watching the video. My boy just edited for me in the backyard. I was like, bro, when are you going to sign with us? That's how it happened. Damn. Mm-hmm. And had you already, had Wiz already had KK? Or you already gave him that by then? Nah, that was way before. So how did how did that start? Was KK something that you was working on? It was another name? No, it was just the OG that I used to get. Like I said, it was just the best OG from the city, and he liked OG. And so when every time he hit me, I'd bring him OG. I'd bring OG to L.A. after I signed with him. And I was kind of just kind of like his weed man, for real, for real. Not like he was buying a lot of it, but you know, I was kind of bringing him the bud he was smoking on. And then I used to just put Khalifa Kush on the bag, and then I just put KK. Just KK mm. for short. That's his shit. He loved it, and it stuck. That's and that dope. was it. And I gave him the genetics, and it, that's it. Is is burner more of a sativa or indica or hybrid or both? I'm a flavor boy. I like flavor. Whatever yeah. it is, as long as it tastes good, smells good in the air, and get me high, I'm going to smoke it. Yeah, yeah. Um, under the Influence Tour, was that your first major tour? Mm, fuck, my memory shot. Is it that or the 2050 tour? Okay. okay. With Wiz and Juicy J, Ty yeah. Dollar Sign couple other people. Uh, them tours was dope as fuck, by yeah. the way. Like, they was just dope. Aesthetically, yeah. they was but dope Under as fuck. the Influence was dope because Mac Miller was on that shit. Kendrick Lamar was yeah. on that shit, right? Yeah. Yeah, that shit was dope. That like, shit I was remember fire. Kendrick Lamar, we used to watch him perform and he was screaming in the mic. We're like, dude, this dude is fucking, he needs to step it up. Dude, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Look at him now. He's, they say he's the best. 
that's crazy. One of the yeah. best, right? But I'm talking about we used to watch his set and be dying. We'd be like, man, this dude's screaming in the mic. This is nuts. Yeah. Bro, and look at dude now. He's one of the best. That's crazy. Rest in peace to Mac Miller, brother. Rest you know in what peace, like, Mac Miller. That was very uh, – Schoolboy Q was on that tour, mm-hmm. too. Shout out to Schoolboy Q. That's the homie right there. So we had a really good time on that tour. I, um, I know that you – you know, you had tons of collaboration albums, but you know, certain ones stick out. But speak to the relationship of like you and Jacka. Man, that was my favorite rapper. Man, still is. Like, um, I'm developing a show right now with uh, with FX. I can't really talk about what or who's involved or whatnot. But they asked me, "What's one song of yours you could play um, that represents this certain era?" I said, "Well, shit, I ain't gonna play no song of mine. I want to hear Never Blink." Mm. Or you know, die young, mm. right? And so we use a Jacka record in in my in my TV series. You know, that's dope as hell. Yeah. Um, I feel like in in hip hop, there's a sub genre of like I don't know what they call it, but like we rap basically. Uh, and you like in a short amount of time, you've become practically the biggest face and then you have those guys you have snoop of course which is the logo godfather yeah. right you have red and meth you have uh different stoner rappers smoke dizzy you have afro man you have the list just goes on and on right um is that a is that a thing though because you guys do end up touring together a lot you guys do a lot of shows together but like is that sub genre of rap is that a thing and how, how does burner embrace that because you're just a hip-hop guy but because of your other lines of work and your, the influence of weed in your life, you're considered a weed rapper. You know what's the coolest thing about that? Like, I'll take that too because, like, I don't feel like I really. A lot of people send me songs about, bro. I'm not rapping about weed, and yeah. I don't really. <laughs> I, I actually just be on my storytelling shit. But I realized I was a weed rapper when I got paid two hundred and twenty thousand dollars to perform for fifteen minutes, dog. Mm. and I was an opener for this in the event. Mm. So I want you to put this in perspective. There was a festival. I got paid $220,000 to do 15 minutes. I went on early as fuck. I went on like at 1 p.m. and the shit was over by 10 or 11. And I realized wow. at that moment that I had to be on that fire to validate that festival as an official weed festival. And they knew that they had to give me a bag or I wasn't going to pull up. And I realized at that moment, like, damn, bro, I got a pretty crazy little niche right now because yeah. I for sure ain't worth I mean, I was a hate on myself, but I ain't worth 220 Gs for right, 15 right, minutes. Right, I had right, a lick. Right. I actually kept trying to rap. I'm like, nah, you got to go. I'm like, <laughs> fuck it. I just hit, man. I just hit, man. 220 for 15 minutes. I was all on my base. Like, I don't give a fuck. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Let's, Let's go get good. some tacos, man. Let's we out of here. But I realized that that's the shit right now. So, like, there will be certain festivals where, like, you know, they, they might not be looking for me musically, but, like, we got to make this thing at the biggest weed event. Go get burner. I'm like, cool. Well, I'm going to need... Boom, and it happens, and so I'm like, I guess I am a weed rapper. Hell I'll take yeah, it. fuck that. I'll, I'll take, take it that too. shit all day. Shit, I, fuck that. Um, the confusion early on, or the, the you know, I don't want to say confusion because all of us want success, right? You've been extremely successful and been doing able to do what you do, and we, I'm gonna say we, so I can hold a, hold everybody accountable, right, and hold it to the fire, including myself. We all want some sort of no, notoriety, right? There's been claims of different people who had affiliation with cookies. You know, me and Selsky talked. I wore a cookie shirt on this, and then you have Delvin, rest in peace, Cookie mm-hmm. Man. Um, how does that work? And is it the influence of the actual cookies brand that just did that? Or, you know, it's, it's even like, I'll tell you a similar situation. Like, when people speak of Ghazi, they speak of you and Ghazi similar. Like, it's some of our most successful people, but I was around when... You know, you know how those conversations yeah, go. Yeah, man. But look, I had this same kind of like experience with um, when I was reading the comments for Splash City, my my first feature film. I wanted to do that first, or I was thinking about that first. And how is he gonna go do that, bro? Because I did it. So like, my whole thing is like, actions speak louder than words. And nobody's seen Girl Scout cookies before me. That's a fact. Because my homeboy created it and he brought it straight to me because I was the one that could sell bags with seeds for 4,800 all day long. Mm-hmm. I was the one on the internet making this shit hot. I was the one around Wiz Khalifa and all these other people when no one else can get around people. So I was the first person to see Girl Scout cookies. I was the first one to ever see Sunset Sherbet. I was the first one to have gelato on my hands. I actually went to the the the, uh, the testing um 
we tested for the THC percentages for gelato, you can't rewrite history. And so right. you're around some shit, but that, that don't make it yours. What makes it mine is the motherfucking logo is registered on the day it was registered, <laughs> and the shit is worldwide, right. and it ain't just based in the Bay. You're this right. motherfucker's from here to motherfucking, uh, motherfucking Thailand, dog. To Ireland, Switzerland, Scot Scotland. Like, but this shit is real, dog. And so a lot of people, including my good friends, shout out to my brother Salski, I mm -hmm. love that dude for, for life, but they know what it is, bro. This right. is my shit. I built it from the ground up. I put everything I got into it. Right. And, 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 and you know, like I say, it's it's... It's a lot of times people express and wanting to be a part of it. And then you know how shit goes. Stories get told and shit get mistold and misinterpreted. So that's how it comes. But it, it all I, I always try to look at the positive side of things. And I look at it like, well, if it wasn't shit, nobody wouldn't want to be a part Here's of it. Here's my thing. If you're doing something, if you're around something dope and you believe in it, you better move on it because someone else will do it fast. fast right? I don't care if it's music, fashion, weed. A new idea, a new, so, bro, you better do it and you better put your all into it. You better go trademark that shit and you better get some goddamn paper trails about that because this has happened to me a hundred times with a hundred different things. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So if you like something, if you work on something, if you're doing something, bro, put that shit in fucking paper and put that shit in, in goddamn universe and move on it fast. And, 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 and transitioning it just to get off of that having those issues like uh, with other brands and collaborations, you know, um, different. Uh, business relationships and possible friendships and then sp uh, splits, you know, with uh, whether it's brands like Runtz or other brands. Like, how does that work in this business? Because when I see you move around, I don't see Burner move around with hard feelings. I don't see Burner speak on anybody in any negative light. It's always all positive. So when those splits happen, do they usually be uh, amicable splits? Like, there's no problems behind it? And You, you know, know, I look at first... It's a little tension. People feel like, and that's why, like, I've taken my new approach and just like with my business. I told you in the very beginning, I like to use my platform. I like to use it to embrace people, to show love, and try to bring people together and put people on. And at the end of the day, like, not everyone understands a longer play. Mm -hmm. There's a longer play for all this. Mm -hmm. There's a longer play for all this. And people, especially our people, know the brown bag and the quick money. And so if it's not coming like that, and they're not, they're not, Pulling, putting money in their pockets right away, then they think something's wrong. I believe in the bigger play. Mm -hmm. So there's never no hard feelings. I love my brothers from Runtz. You know, LB, shout out to my brother LB, my brother Ray Bama. There was one bad seat in that crew that didn't really understand what was going on. And I just say, you know, hey, man, like, y'all want to do your thing? Do it. Do you it. You know, I don't feel bad about that. We've we parted way with multiple crew and shit like that. But at the end of the day, it's like, I don't wish I don't try to hold nobody back. I'm not like the record label is gonna tell you, nah, you can't go do shit. We have yeah. to figure out some business because I did put millions of dollars behind your business. I took this shit worldwide again. I didn't do it locally. I took your shit worldwide. I had you on shelves in countries, not not our country, in countries. Countries. Right. So then we had to work out some business, but otherwise I, I don't have no hard feelings for nobody. Is the cookies brand so big that's even in collaboration situations? Cause cause what it seems like to me is the brand scene tends to overshadow the collaborator, right? So nah, it, that's not the case. That's what people like to think. And a matter of fact, Runtz was our number one selling strain for a long time. Okay. When they felt like they were being uh, overshadowed or shelved, I'm like, guys, men lie, women lie, but numbers don't. How are you being shelved and you're the top seller in all our markets? Mm -hmm. You guys just aren't getting paper right now because that's not what we're doing. We're, we're in hyper growth mode. Right. There's right. a reason why we have the most stores and out of all the MSOs that raise billions of dollars, we're in hyper growth mode. We put everything back into building this business. So when we exit, you're finna hit. Mm -hmm. But I feel you. You ain't getting no money right now. You feel like you're getting played. You feel like you're shell. You guys want to go your own way. Respect, brother. Right. But at that time, I text my brother Ray and I showed him. I said, bro, you guys are the top seller. So you guys are not being shadowed. Right. You guys are not being shelved. Right. He's not seeing paper right now because that's not our business model. You know how much money I make off cookies weed? How much? Wow. Zero, dog. Wow. I say that, I say that honest to God, I swear on my mother, swear on my daughter, I make zero dollars from weed, bro. Wow. I make zero dollars from weed. You know what I make money from? Music, clothing, all that shit like that. Weed, I make zero dollars for. So for everyone that's trying to build some, you ain't going to eat right away from it. But I guarantee you're going to watch this video in three years when I exit this bitch for $2 billion. And you're right. like, damn, that boy was smart as fuck. Smart as So the weed is actually a commercial for Burner's 
Burner the brand and what comes with Burner. The weed is just the bigger play. We all know it's, you can't make any money right now. It's not federal. The laws are set up for it not to be able to be monetized properly. It's it's survival of the fittest. But we all know that the brands is what's going to matter when it does go. And mm-hmm. I feel like I got a hell of a brand. That's mm-hmm. what I put all my time and money into. And just to be clear, you are the first person to actually brand the weed, like you put logo, because we heard the names, we hadn't ha- actually nah, seen I'm a logo. The, I'm the, I feel like I'm like Steve Jobs, dog. I feel like I'm the first person to actually put my face next to a brand of weed with the actual logo, an identity, and a mm. colorway. Because right now in New York, across the street from Macy's, there's a building with five stories that's just painted blue, and mm. everyone knows what it is. Mm. I'm th- think about how powerful it that's is. That's crazy. Though. That's where the Thanksgiving Day parade has been going out since we were babies. Yeah. Five story building in New York is just painted blue, and everybody knows what it is. Put an eight in a one and do magic. Trying to stretch hair around like elastic. Eco friendly drug dealer, I don't waste no plastic. Use all four corners of that baggie. Uh, all I ever wanted was a bankroll. So I pull up on champ before the bank close. Say no to stank hoes and stank clothes. No paramedic pimping, nigga, we don't save hoes. Yeah, rest in peace to Lil M. My love.